we now take a look at another one of my favorite episodes of the show, The Way We Was. Uh, first broadcasted on January 31st, 1991, written by Al Jean, Mike Reese, and Sam Simon, and directed by David Silverman. In the first Simpsons flashback episode, Marge tells the story of how she and Homer met in high school in 1974. Homer and Marge meet for the first time during detention, and he immediately tries to get Marge to be his date for the prom. She initially agrees, but ends up attending with Artie Ziv, voiced by John Lovitz, the first of his many roles in the show. And in the end, Marge forgets going with Artie and reveals that she has fallen in love with Homer. And thus, the rest is history. Before we even get to the episode, one of the most notable things to come out of this episode is that this is the first time we see Rainier Wolfcastle, a.k.a. McBain. However, there was a movie that was coming out at the time, literally called McBain, starring Christopher Walken, and was released the same year, which actually did lead to some issues. Yes, this is an actual McBain movie I'm about to show you. What does it take to set a country free? This is our annual fundraising drive. And we would like you to contribute $10 million. This is the number of a Swiss bank account. Don't lose it. Christopher Walken, Maria Conchita Alonzo, McBain, rated R. Starts Friday, September 20th at a theater near you. So when the film was released in 1991 after the episode had aired, the film's producers refused to allow the show to use the name in future episodes, so the name Rainier Wolfcastle had to be used to represent the actor's real name and was, cre was created to use that instead. Later, the use of the name McBain returned to the show because, let's be honest, the McBain movie with Christopher Walken was not a big hit at all, and um, yeah, that was for the best because honestly... Would you rather have watched that movie with Christopher Walker, or would you rather have wanted to see the McBain movie that they had been building up, starting with this episode, going into the next couple of seasons? Mendoza! So there's a little interesting history on that front there, but let's talk about the episode itself, because really, this is very high up there in my favorite Simpsons episodes of all time. I put this in the list in my original Top 20 Simpsons episodes list, where I put it in with... Um, I Married Marge, Lisa's First Word, and even and, and Maggie Makes Three, because those four episodes together do a great job of showcasing how the Simpsons family essentially came to be, because in this episode, of course, you have Homer and Marge meeting for the first time. I Married Marge, you have the birth of uh, Bart. Lisa's First Word, you have the birth of Lisa, and then in Maggie Makes Three, you have the birth of Maggie. So you have four episodes right there that do a really good job of basically setting up how this family came to be and uh this really is the simpsons at its finest not only do we have a really great episode with a perfectly written story of how ho and marge got together the animators take every opportunity to get this episode a beautiful looking animation style you feel like you're in the 1970s when you watch these flashback scenes and especially the scene where homer and marge meet for the first time it's just it's just pure beauty to watch excuse me is this room 106? Hey, who's that? I... I don't Why know. Why do birds suddenly appear Every time you are near Just like me, they long uh -oh. to be Hey, would you like to go? Oh, she's mine! Just the way the colors move, it just feels like you're stuck in the 1970s and they could have just given those scenes its traditional animation style, but they decided to take it one step further, and that's just one of the reasons why I think this season in particular is so unique. It's a very good story. It's a very well-written story. It's very believable. It's perfectly structured, and it just works. If anyone was to ask me the question of how do I think Mar Homer and Marge met, this is a story I could definitely believe in. It works because you can definitely see how Homer, before he meets Marge, is your typical slacker and could care about less anything less than falling in love, like that great bit in the beginning when he hears the song Why Do Birds Suddenly Appear, which it would eventually become their song, and he turns it off and decides to li and decides to listen to Space Cowboy. But um but you know but then he sees Marge for the first time and that song plays and he just has that transition any high school student would have if they fall in love for the first time. And everybody can relate to that. It's something that happens to everybody in their at one point in their life. Once again, the animation is just beautiful to look at. Again, 
doing a good job of making the current setting and the 70s setting look very different. And you can definitely see the differences. Like, there's a little bit of a 70s film grain, except without the film grain involved in it. And that's really, really a lot of fun aspects about the great, the, one of the brilliant aspects of the episode in general. The comedy here is also very good, too. You got Homer struggling in the bait to, to get Marge's attention, so he decides, you know, when the, the debate moderator's just like, Homer, would you like to present your rebuttal? And Homer's like, with pleasure, and he just moons everybody. And then it cuts back to him in the, in, the, in uh, 1991. He's just, got his, he's just got his arms locked up. He's just like, yeah, I did it. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm, the, I'm not regretting that decision. But then you have uh, Marge's attention. But then you have Barney streaking across the prom because, of course, for, it, it was for some reason in the 1970s, everyone just wanted to go streaking in random places. I mean, they did it at the Oscars that year, and I, I love the I love the the principal, the principal Donnellinger. After Barney does that, he's just like, well, that young man's bought himself about a decade of detention. Like, little lines like that are always great. And the voice acting is once again really good. John Lovitz, like I said, starts a spectacular run of recurring characters in the show playing Artie Ziff, and he's just just really, really good in this. Really, really fun. And he does start... And I do like that he starts off as a likable, believable guy. Like, I love how the episode tricks you into thinking that this Artie Ziff guy is all on the med. You know, he's a, he's a smart student. He know, like, say, like, he knows what he's doing, and then, of course, towards the end of the episode, when, you know, he's got Marge right where he wants him, you know, those animal instincts come out when you, when you go up to uh, the... Uh, what is it? Make out reef or something like that. It's like the the, the make out. Is I can't remember what it was in this episode. Inspiration point. Basically, you know, after the prom, where all the where all the teens go to make whoopee, pretty much. But um, one thing I've noticed in this episode. One of the things that I didn't really realize until the, until watching it several years later was, you know, you have Marge's friend in high school. She has three different voices throughout this episode. I mean, literally, one of them is Tress McNeil. One is one time is Maggie Roswell, who at that point sounds like Maude Flanders, and I don't know who the last one is, but I'm pretty sure it's Pam Hayden, the voice of Millhouse. But uh, I could be wrong on that, so don't quote me on that. But it's just very, very weird how they just give this one per person three different voices, like, and just no, pretend like there's no big deal about it whatsoever. Of course, this is another episode that sticks the landing with its ending. It has one of the most satisfying conclusions ever because just when you think Homer, Homer, th because we all know what's going to happen. Homer and Marge are eventually going to get together, but you really do think that, like, you really do think while that's going on, like, like when Homer is just in this mood where he's just like, I don't understand why nothing is working for, for me. Like he doesn't understand how, how it's like he like he doesn't understand the concept of love in general, and so when he sees the woman that he's destined to be with, like, he has no idea how to accept rejection, and, of course, as we find out later on, you know, Marge makes the biggest mistake, Marge realizes that the biggest mistake of hers that night was going out with Artie Ziff and knowing that, you know, he, she had this guy that was always, that was always, that was willing to do whatever it takes to be with her in Homer, and it really leads to that great payoff at the end when, you know, you know, she, you know, Homer's walking home, and he's like, he's like, he, and he's like so de so de depressed and all that, and then you see Marge coming up and says, "Hey, you want to lift?" And then that's how the relationship begins again, and like it has that gr it has a really solid solid conclusion. It's one of the reasons why this is one of my favorite episodes of all time, very high up there. It does a great job of giving us a very realistic, very well written story of how these two first fell in love with each other. It brings in some great animation, a lot of great comedy all the way through. A very satisfying conclusion. This is definitely a must-see episode. This is one that I highly put up there as one of the show's most definitive episodes. Just a classic episode all the way through. Easily the best, one of the best episodes of the season, the way we was. Shut up! I'm over as far as I can go. All right, all right. I'll walk in the mud. Homer. Marge. Yeah, you want a ride? Sure. You know, Homer, when I got home, I realized who I should have gone to the prom with. Who? Oh. Hi, prom day. Marge, poor boo. Hmm. Why so glum? <sighs> I got a problem. Once you stop this car, I'm gonna hug you and kiss you, and then I'll never be able to let you go. And I never have. 